Good morning, everybody, and welcome once again uh, to our second, uh, well, not full day, but second day of deliberation as the Citizens' Assembly of Scotland. Um, I trust everybody did have a good sleep last night. Yes, we are rested and uh, ready to take on the uh, tasks in hand. Um, I just wanted to first of all pass on my apologies to you uh, from David uh, for personal reasons. He's not able to be here with us today. However, as you know, all the work that we are doing is being gathered onto the website and being live streamed. So he will be able to catch up with all your hard work and deliberations uh, between now and our next weekend. And I think it's fair to say that you did do a huge amount of work yesterday. Um, I was reflecting on the 67 outcomes uh, that you've pieced together that you'll be working through today. And it's clear that you were able to reflect on the uh, ideas of individual happiness, what makes the good life, the good country, and the values and how they shape the country we want to be. And it feels that we genuinely are edging towards a common view of the Scotland that we want to see for ourselves and for future generations. And I think the 67 statements that you'll be working with today really do encapsulate the, the breadth and diversity of views across the Assembly. Although I'm still not quite sure if Scotland are ever going to win the World Cup. <laughs> maybe not in football and maybe not in men's football, you never know. Okay, so we're going to move on today um, and we're going to have time to discuss uh, the broad vision and then take on the extremely challenging task of narrowing down to agree those statements uh, that, are, that are most important to all or the majority of you. And I think I need to really reiterate now is that we are now moving to work as an assembly, as a, as a, as a collective group together. We're moving from the individual to, uh, to a collective um, endeavour. And we're, we're going to find the most common ground um, across the assembly. So you've got to demonstrate that, I think the, the, the power is now in your hands to demonstrate by respectful, deliberative discussion, um, we can make a difference. And in doing that, we're going to be um, actually <laughs> seeing through practically what the first minister said on the 24th, uh, 24th of April in her parliamentary statement. Now, I said this the last time to you, but I think it's, it's really important to reiterate again why we are here and what we're doing. So the first minister said, we should try to find ways of debating our choices respectfully and in a way that seeks maximum areas of agreement. We should lay a foundation that allows us to move forward together, whatever decisions we ultimately arrive at. And I think it's important to reflect again that we are involved in an in a important and historic um, event. And we need to move together as one. Remember that we will not be carrying forwards every statement, but we're, we're carrying forwards the ones that are most important to us. But rest assured that all the material that you've worked on today, and yesterday, and the weekend before, we're not losing that. So all the material that is moving us forward will be kept, will be on the website, will be able to be reflected upon in others in other ways. So please don't feel that any of your input um, is being lost because it really isn't. And so once we once we agree our shared vision for for the country, um, we're going to use the next three four weekends to really start digging into how do we best overcome the challenges faced by Scotland and the world, including uh, as the results of Brexit, and what information do citizens require in order to take informed decisions about the future. It feels to me that we are at a, at a pivotal point in our work, um, and I commend you for your input, enthusiasm, good humour and grace from yesterday, and I'm really looking forward to hearing what comes out of today. So it's going to be a hard-working morning, but I sincerely hope you enjoy it, and I sincerely hope you can all get behind it. So thank you very much. And <laughs> Kelly. Hello. Thank you very much. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. morning. Um, so we're really going to get stuck right into it today. Um, 
So briefly, what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be revisiting all the statements that came out of yesterday. That's going to be the first part of the session. And then what we're going to be moving into doing is talking about um, basically the priorities for the things that you want to discuss in future weekends, and also the list of things that we think represent the common ground across the assembly. So our starting point today, essentially, is reviewing the 67 statements that came out of yesterday. They're the statements that you wrote that were sorted and were refined. And thank you for that. that was a, it, was, it was amazing, as I said yesterday, to watch that task play out in the room. But what it's enabled us to do is get to a point where you have created what is now a manageable set of statements to help us identify that common ground across the assembly and move forward into setting some priorities. And what we're going to produce is essentially a first draft of the kind of Scotland that you want to build. And that's something I'm sure we will come back and revisit in future weekends. And because all of the work that you did yesterday was on different groups of statements, what none of you heard, although we did get a flavour at the end of the day when we shared some stuff across the room, but none of you heard all of the statements together. So that's how we're going to start. On your tables, each of you will have a list of those 67 statements that I mentioned. Um, and your table facilitators will hand them out in a moment. But what they're also going to do is that they're going to read out each of the statements in this next session. And every table has exactly the same statements. But you have the statements in your printed lists in a different and random order. And there's a reason for that. We've done that because often it's easier to remember the first and last items in lists. And we don't want to bias the decisions that you make later on. So every table has the same statements, just in a different order. So we're going to get stuck right in, really. Um, and I'm going to hand over to your table facilitators, and you're going to see what you came up with yesterday. Back in a while. OK, everybody, could I um, please bring your attention back to the room just for a moment? I'm just going to explain what happens next. For those of you that are still reviewing your statements, that's absolutely fine. Please continue reviewing for another 10 minutes or so. But for those of you that have gone through your lists, you've got a little bit familiar with everything, and now you want to make uh, a little bit of progress on the next task, I'm just going to explain what the task is. And please do move on to that as soon as you're ready. Um, so first of all, I hope you felt that the statements that you produced and that came out of yesterday um, reflected on balance the kind of country you want to build. And of course, we've sought there a range of views from across the room. But now we come to the part where we take the statements that we've been working with and we make some choices about how important they are. So you'll see that your facilitator has each of those statements printed out individually. Um, if you just maybe show the pile of statements there. So that is each of the statements that is on the same list that you have just been reviewing, but individually. And your task now is to um, gather those statements into three categories. First category, high priority. So that's where your table thinks that that statement is very important to include in the assembly's vision. Low priority, that's where your table thinks the statement is important potentially, but that is not important that it should be included in the assembly's uh, vision. So that it's not important that it should be included in the assembly's vision. And then there's a medium priority, and that's for everything else. That might be for statements where you maybe, you know, you're not too sure on your table, but actually maybe you want to revisit it at the end. Park it in your medium pile too, in order to make progress through the rest of the pile. Your table facilitator, though, uh, is going to lead you through the process now. And by the end of this process, you should have sorted all of those 67 statements into one of those three categories. Over to you. Good stuff. OK, everyone, we're all done. We're all done. Um, I think that work deserves a round of applause. So please, again. Okay. Fantastic. OK, I'm just going to keep you very briefly. Um, but before we make some more progress, we go for a break, I just wanted to take a very brief moment to reflect on what you've just accomplished. So what you've done this morning is that you've considered whether a series of statements produced across the assembly by you represent our common ground on the Scotland that we're seeking to build. And through that, I hope that you've shared your views. You've heard the views of other people. 
You've reflected on those views and you've deliberated to agree a list of high priority statements on what represents that common ground across the assembly. So that means there were, of course, some statements that your table might not have decided reflected the common ground at this time. Um, and you know, just because they weren't put into that high priority pile, it doesn't mean that that statement is lost. As we've said a few times, every statement, just like those yesterday, will be captured in the event reporting. So everything will be in the reports. And please also bear in mind that every table has gone through the same process and may well, we don't know yet, may well have produced a list of high priorities that's a bit different. So when we return from the break, you'll get an indication of what has come up across the room. So what happens next is that during the break, the facilitators will create a list of the statements that came out most strongly. And we're doing it again in the room, so it's over there. If you want to go and watch Anthony typing in your statements, you're so welcome to go and do that. I'm sure he would love it. Um, so yeah, we'll be going for break, but just before we do, um, I am informed that it may or may not be a couple of people's birthdays in the room today. Um, I'm not going to call them out unless they would like to identify themselves, but we thought it'd be nice to do a collective round of happy birthday. Um, maybe say assembly member, unless you do want to identify yourself. I'll give you a moment. Fellow assembly member is the name we will put in. So, oh no, I kind of have to do a karaoke moment and set this off, don't I? That's really awkward, I've just realised. <coughs> Okay, three, two, one. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to fellow assembly member. Happy birthday to you. Okay, go for your break and please be back in 30 minutes. So just around 11.30, please. Okay, everyone. Thank you uh, for bearing with us for a little bit. Um, and uh, we thought it'd be good to give you an el uh, elongated break as well, so you could kind of de decompress from the last session. So some members wanted a little bit more time just to kind of hang out and relax and just think about all the stuff we discussed before we went into the next bit. So I just want to start by letting you, letting you know something about one of the statements that has come up of the session that we started yesterday. Um, so one, uh, a member has filed a note of concern about one of the statements that was included in that list of 67 um, and they perceived it to be discriminatory and that it may not be consistent with the code of conduct that we've all signed up to. So just wanted to let you know um, what's going to happen now is that we'll, we will publish the list but without that statement for the time being. We will have space and there will be the opportunity to clarify the intent of that statement if anyone would wish to do so. And we ask that you get in touch with the Secretariat uh, in order to do that. Um, so there will be space to clarify intent of the statement, but just to let you know that it won't be published. And you'll see when everything is published, uh, it'll be clear what that statement was. Um, but I thought it was important to explain that that was gonna happen in the room so that you're all aware. So that aside for now, we're moving on to something I hope you think is quite exciting, which is the announcement of the results from that process that you've gone through this morning. And we are, well, my glamorous assistant, Anthony, is hopefully, 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 going to get that up on the screen. So, fingers crossed. This is taking longer and I can't keep the stance. It's like a lunge. Is it working? Is it working? Oh. 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 Teasing you now. Oh, dear. Well, <laughs> that wasn't quite the moment I was going for. Oh. Hey. Excellent. <laughs> Fantastic. So, what you see here is a list of the statements that came up across the assembly, which you put in your high priority piles. And uh, you'll see there that there may be some that certainly came out of your high priority list. There may be others that weren't in your high priority list, but were thought to be high priorities by at least three of the different tables in this room. 
Um, so we have a list here of 22 different things. So 22 different statements that across this room people felt were a high priority. So what we're going to do now is we're going to be working from this list. And from this list, we're going to be selecting what you think it's most important to discuss in future weekends. So you've got a list there that's maybe a bit longer, well, definitely is a bit longer than the 10 that you came out with. But what we're focusing on now is what you want to discuss in future weekends. And actually, it may be the case that even though you thought things were really high priorities for that common statement on the kind of Scotland we're seeking to build, there might be a few statements that actually, although it wasn't in that high priority, we'd love to discuss it with people from across Scotland and we think it would make for a really interesting assembly discussion. So um, I'm gonna hand over, before we move on to anything, to Kate, who's gonna give some reflection on everything that we've just done and these announcements. So here we go. Thank you very much. Um, thank you to Kelly for uh, revealing our results. Um, I think, again, I think, you know, my role here is to mark the um, historic event, this, the hard work that you have just gone through. And I have to say, you've deliberated and you've agreed on, on 22 um, statements for the kind of Scotland that you're seeking to, be, uh, so seeking to build. Sorry. Um, I have to say, walking around the room, um, if we could harness deliberative debate as a renewable energy, I think we'd have solved half our problems in the first place. There was heat, there was fire, um, there was also hugging, uh, and, but there was concern and consideration. And I just want to reiterate with you that we are, we are operating in a kind of a risky environment. You are taking a risk with us and, and we're all uh, moving forward into um, a new vision of how we do things. But please do reflect very clearly on the, um, the rules of engagement that we have set out with each other and that we carry on um, as these risks grow, uh, that we carry on with respect um, and uh, responsibility. So, so it is really quite serious stuff that we're, that we're um, getting into now. But please do again congratulate yourselves on that incredibly intense hour and a half, um, which I hope you feel that the, uh, the building blocks have taken to that point where we could really, um, if that's my mother, tell her I'm a wee bit busy. Um, okay, so yeah, can we just, you know, reflect on the seriousness, but also uh, congratulate yourselves again, once again, on, on this incredibly hard work. Uh, I was almost a bit, teary actually as I was walking around and there was a kind of a, a, a swell of, of pride and I hope despite the difficult decisions we've made despite the difficult uh, discussions we've had that, that you can you can genuinely feel that pride too um, so for the record and for the cameras <laughs> can we have a just a round of applause for each other and how you've dealt with this okay so yeah, risks, um, and I've mentioned earlier on that we'll be working uh, after the general election, a risky proposition perhaps, to promote the vision and, and get the people of Scotland um, talking about the Citizens' Assembly. Now I feel that you have um, really stepped up to the plate and really engaged with this process. And I and David and the Secretariat and uh, everybody who, who's involved in this process will be taking it out to Scotland to really uh, shout it from the rooftops about how, um, how important this is. And I'd really encourage you as members to do so as well through your friends and through your families and through sharing stories with us um, and through the website. Um, but yeah, just don't underestimate what you're doing. Don't underestimate how uncomfortable, it may make you feel at times, uh, don't underestimate your point in history. Um, so thank you sincerely again, and I'm going to hand back to Kelly, hopefully. Yes. More spontaneous applause if you want. <laughs> oh, fantastic. So I'm actually just here to hand you back to your table facilitators who will take you through the next part of the process. Um, so you should have the, the list on your table. They'll take you through that list of 22 statements that we're going to be discussing now. Over to you. It really is over to you. 
Off we go. Hi all, um, I've had a couple of questions, so I just wanted to clarify to the room that there are four things that you're being asked to consider as you're going through those process. Um, that's what's up on the slide here. I'm just gonna quickly read it so you do have it at the forefront of your mind. Uh, they are that the statement would require quite different choices about how to move forward, that decisions will have a major impact on the future of Scotland, that it's likely to be difficult to take decisions on an agreed basis, and that the statement has constitutional implications requiring either changes to how and by whom decisions about the country are taken or the different governments and parliaments to work together to implement decisions. So that's just guidance, it's not hard criteria, so your statements don't have to meet all of that, but it's just to guide your thinking, because remember what we're doing now is selecting priorities for discussion at future weekends. So just please keep that in mind as you're, as you're going through your deliberations. Thank you. Okay, everyone, can I please bring the room back together? Oh, thank you. Okay, so now what's gonna happen? So you've just gone through a process there where you've selected your priorities for discussion at future weekends. I'm gonna ask a representative from each of the tables to come up and share the top three, so just the top three from that list. Although where you may have had a joint top three, I'll, I'll allow you four, um, <laughs> but please no more than that if possible. I oh, know, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And then you will share that with the room and Anthony again, Anthony give a wave. Hello, is sitting here and is very, very diligently entering your scores into a sheet, which is tallying them as we go. So what that means is that in the room, very swiftly, we will have the result and we'll be able, to share that be able to share that with you. So, you know, this is my Eurovision moment. I'm gonna be the announcer. I'm gonna guide us through this process. I think we're gonna start with table one and then go in order. So just so you know, to be prepared. And I am gonna ask you to come to the front of the room. So just where I'm standing right now, if that's okay. So please be prepared to do that. Um, although if you do need us to come to you with a mic, just flag and I'll, I'm happy to run over too, but please do come to the front of the room. Oh wow, you're already here, you table one. Yeah, let's get on with it. Right, I was gonna say table one, come on up, but I'll do it for the rest maybe. Okay, we're good to go, table one. Yeah, so we had some good debates. Thank you, thank you. We had some quite intense debates, um, some quite long ones. We had to kind of hurry along. But our first one we come up with was number two, was to invest and provide a thriving and fit for purpose health service. And then our second one was number seven, to be a social responsible, taking care of the most vulnerable in society. And our third one was number one, a uh, sustainable society with balance and environment, economic and social impact for the good of the country and the citizens. Brilliant. Thank you very much. Table two, come on up. <laughs> Top three-ish, please. So our first one was invest in and provide a thriving fit for purpose health service, number two. Um, our second one was provide a free world-class education for all. And our third one was have a strong and stable public service for all. Table three, time to shine. Thank you. Well, our three from table three were the first three on the list, but not in that order. Okay, can anybody hear me now? Okay, yeah, just to repeat, uh, we chose the, the first three on the list, actually, on your printed list here, uh, but not in the same order. So number one is number one, which is to be a sustainable society where we balance our environmental, economic, and social impact for the good of the country and its citizens. Uh, two, we came up with uh, provide a free world-class education for all. And uh, number three, invest in and provide a thriving and fit for purpose health service. Table four. Uh, it should be on. Oh, it's on, it's on. Yeah. 
Well, we didn't debate. I heard somebody say we debated. We just done this ourselves. Picked our own three, so I don't know. Just checking we've done it right. Now, we didn't talk about it amongst ourselves. We all sat quietly and read what we wanted and chose our top three. So, <laughs> Well, have we done it right? <laughs> uh, well, they've done it different. Number, uh, our number one, and all eight of us voted on that, was to be a sustainable society where we balance our environmental, economic, social impact. Daddy, da. You've all got it in front of you. <laughs> number, num our number two uh, was actually number 13, our second one, and it was we will improve on living standards and quality of life for everyone now and in the future. And our third choice was number two, and invest in and provide a thriving and fit for purpose health service. Thank you very much. <laughs> Next table, please. Thank you. How are you doing? Shh. Stop slagging me. Nice to see you guys. Um, we actually have four answers, so hence we've got a joint first and a joint third. What do you mean on three? I'm not singing for anyone. Um, right. Joint first are number one and number 22, so a la grace, be a sustainable society, blah, blah, blah. And number 22, provide a tolerant, safe, secure, and stable environment for all people to grow. Then our joint third was answers two and 13, and those are invest in and provide a thriving and fit for purpose health service. And 13, which was, uh, will improve on living standards and quality of life for everyone now and in the future. Thank you very much. All right, table six, come on up, please. Table six. You get a bit more suspense as we move across the room now because it takes a bit longer. Hello. Um, our first priority was to be a stable society. Yeah, you know the rest. Um, number two was have better income and better living wage to reduce poverty. And number three was to have a greater and stronger state pension. Thank you. Table seven, please. Come on up. All right, for table number seven, our first priority was number three, provide a free world-class education for all. Our second priority was number two, invest in and provide a thriving and fit for purpose health service. And our third priority was number five, be a prosperous and financially secure country. Thank you very much. Table eight, please. Table eight. Hello. Hello there. Thank you. Uh, my our first one was number two, invest in and provide a thriving and fit for purpose health service. Our second one was number 11, be democratic, fair, honest, transparent, and inclusive. And our third one was number 22 provide a tolerant, safe, secure, and stable environment for all people to grow. Table nine, please. Hello, table nine. Table nine, thank you. Table nine, our uh, first uh, three priorities that we discussed was number one, to have better incomes, a better living wage to reduce the poverty. Our number two was to have a greater and stronger state pension. And our number three was to be a sustainable society where we can balance our environmental, economic and social impact for the good of our country and its citizens. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Number 10, please. It's quite nice, actually. Yeah, maybe we should have done that for everyone. <laughs> Hello. Hi. Here we are. Thank you. At table 10, our first choice was number one, be a sustainable society. Um, our second choice was number two, invest in and provide a thriving and fit for purpose health service. And our third choice was number five, be a prosperous and financially secure country. Thank you. Thank you very much. Brilliant. Table 11 is on the way. Kimaraha. Votes from Luxembourg. <laughs> that was my Gaelic joke. Anyway, 
Uh, our first one was number 16, ditto. Number two was number two. Number three was number eight. Very efficient. I mean, oh. oh. Might need to decode that a little bit, but yeah. <laughs> Next table, please. Hello, table 12. Table 12, table 12. My table are very shy. Um, so our number one is number 22. Provide a tolerant, safe, secure, and stable environment for all people to grow. Our number two is number six, um, to be free of poverty. And our number three is number two, invest in and provide a thriving and fit for purpose health service. Thank you. Two more tables left. Number 13, it's your time. Come on up, table 13. Thank you. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you very much. Uh, good afternoon to Abdi. Uh, for table 13, our first team was uh, Be a Sustainable Society, where we balance our environmental, economic and social impact for the good of the country and its citizens. Our second team was uh, Be Free of Poverty. And our third team was Have a Strong and Stable Public Service for All. Thank you. And our final table, table 14. Woo, come on up. There we are. Hello. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah. I was going to do some of Tennyson's poetry for you, but I thought, <laughs> sod it, he never did any of mine. Um, number one we had is have better incomes and a better living wage to reduce poverty. Number two was number four, provide housing for everyone. And number three was have equal opportunities for all. Thank you. Thank you. So, fantastic. So now we keep you in suspense, but just for a wee while. Um, so Anthony is just here. He is, how are you, how are you getting on Anthony? <gasps> Table seven, can we have your results please? Okay. Oh. Well, there we go. Brilliant. So we'll keep you in suspense for two minutes and then the results will be here. So please chatter amongst yourselves. Thank you. Okay, everybody. Thank you very much. I uh, can't promise you Sir John Curtis, I can't promise you a swingometer, but I can give you the results of the vote, um, which are on the slide that in a moment when I get the right little bit of dongle, I will be able to put up. Um, so it was um, unsurprisingly quite closely related to what your earlier vote was, but I will show you the results. There was a very clear thing that you want to talk about in future weekends. Um, and assuming this works this time, with a bit less faff than last. There you go. Um, okay, so uh, you can see that at the bottom it's a bit of an eyesight test, I'm afraid. The most popular one was invest in and provide a thriving and fit for purpose health service. So health service and health service provision is one of the things you want to talk about. Also a sustainable society where we balance our environmental, economic and social impact. Um, where we have better incomes and a better living wage, another topic that you want to discuss. And just to pick up a couple of the others further down the list, which were a little bit less popular but still kind of quite high up. Uh, tolerant, safe, secure and stable environment for all people to grow in. Housing and education all came up as topics that you want to talk about. So they'll be, uh, they'll be fed into the process of setting the agenda, which obviously is uh, for the convenience to do. So I'm going to ask Kate to reflect briefly uh, on the outcomes of this. Um, so thank you very much uh, and congratula uh, congratulations again on, on getting to this point. I know it's been uh, it's been a, 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 a sparky and involved um, discussion and debate, but I think that's why we're here. Oh no, it's gone. Dogged only by uh, technological issues. So hopefully in a moment you'll be able to review again um, where the priorities of the assembly lie where you as a group of people have come together um, and deliberated, aha, in very small, oh, very large writing, okay. Okay, but remember this is not 
this is not black and white. This is not an exact science. Um, the themes are engaging, and it's it's clear from your deliberations across the weekend that we know the areas that you want to consider in much more detail. We understand your priorities, and, and we can get on with the um, process of gathering evidence to allow that this is the kind of the what, and now we need to look at the how and the um, how do we change things. Now, could I have a show of hands for anybody who wants to meet for the next 67 weekends? Oh, for goodness sake. Yes. Because we had 67 priorities, and we just don't have the time. <laughs> no. At this point, you're all meant to leave the room going, you must be joking. I'm just going to ignore those people. <laughs> I am just going to ignore those people. No, I think, I think we have to be clear. We, you know, we've got 67 priorities. Some people actually blanched there for a moment. I know. Um, so, you know, we've had to, there has to be a process to sift through. We haven't got 67 weekends, despite obvious enthusiasm in the room. Um, we've got a, we've got four weekends, um, and we can't cover everything. So we're going to be ana uh, analysing this um, these results um, and, uh, and, and kind of nuancing and choosing the topics where we can make recommendations um, that will lead to real changes in Scotland. So nothing is lost. I think I've said that a number of times. Nothing is lost. Um, and if you have comments or if you have ideas and thoughts and, you know, there's still, there's still time. You are the assembly. You, you can nuance. You can, you can discuss and debate. But we've only got four weekends. Um, so we'll be taking uh, a cross. Those areas that will have a major impact on the future of Scotland and where it is likely to be difficult to reach decisions through consensus. Okay, so we'll be putting the very difficult stuff uh, on the table uh, to you. So I think over the last two weekends, we've built trust and um, we've built relationships and it and it has allowed us to debate um, respectfully and I, I I applaud you for that and I, and I hope we can take that forwards um, because because we, as the Assembly, this is a new thing for Scotland, um, and we need to make sure that everybody out with this room recognises that it is possible to make real progress on difficult issues whenever people are brought together. When we are balanced, credible and accessible, um, and evidence is presented, and we have a, 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 a period of deliberation um, where everybody can find some common ground on difficult issues and move forwards together. I think the main message that I'm taking from this weekend is A, you're absolutely up for this, um, which is great, but B is that to gain something, we have to give something up. Um, and I think collectively we have matured as an assembly over the last two weekends, and I think we're probably ready to delve into some of those difficult discussions where if we want to see a better future, we recognise what we can gain, but also what we may have to give up to get there. And perhaps we could share that message with some of our soon-to-be elected members uh, because I'm not quite sure they're quite as good at, th at that as you are in the room. Okay, so you'll be pleased to hear that whenever you hear my voice, we're either at the start of something or we're at the end. I can reassure you, for this weekend, we are at the end. Please reflect on the hard work you've done, enjoy your lunch, and muse over the next five weekends about where we go next. Um, and also celebrate uh, the change of the year in whichever way you see fit. Uh, and finally, one administrative task I'll hand back to Kelly. But for me, sincere thank you. Brilliant. Thank you, everyone. Um, so sure, there's one uh, administrative task left, but it is a very important one, and that is the research to conclude the weekend. So we have the research forms, which your table facilitators are just about to hand out. But as they're doing that, I really want to congratulate you for what you have achieved this weekend. You've come to agreement on a set of priorities that we will now be taking forward for discussion, some of those priorities. Um, I'm aware that the Secretariat are uh, planning to do some things like situation reports on the topics that have come out here. 
There are opportunities if you'd like to discuss uh, with the Secretariat between weekends, just to give a bit more information about why you think, um, you, what you'd like to discuss within some of these priorities, the kind of evidence that you'd like to see coming up through them, and they'll work on that process of producing some information to inform you as we move through the future weekends. So yes, I just want to congratulate you again. I just want to ask you to complete this final admin task. And if you do have time, um, your table facilitators have paper for you to just write a postcard to yourself. And that's just to capture three things that you'd like to remember going into the next weekend. So they're just three things you'd like to remember. We'll collect them in and we'll give them back to you at the start. So please, if you do have time to do that, um, it'd be fantastic if you did. And then we're off for lunch and saying our goodbyes. So thank you so much for your hard work. Thank you.